second lecture. And second lecture, I'd like to introduce the idea of holographic calculation of entanglement entropy. Uh, first, let me start with a quick start, uh, review of holography and LSFT correspondence, very, very quick. So as we know very well in the general relativity, in the presence of gravity, and if you are a lot of massive object, like a heavy star, in the end, if some condition satisfies, then it's gra we have some gravitational crafts into black hole. And the black hole is surrounded by horizon, and the observer cannot see inside the horizon, so there is some hidden information high, hidden inside this horizon. And this is measured by so-called Bekenstein Hawking black hole entropy given by area divided by 4G Newton. And this, condition, this consideration leads to the following simple idea of a so-called entropy bound, more sophisticated version is called boost bound, but this is elementary version is enough for our purpose. Just we take some particular region A, and we, we just want to understand how much information we can input, and how much, the maximum amount of information which we can put in this region called A. And this uh, maximum amount of entropy is bounded by this black hole. And if a black hole forms, it's just the gross size of the black hole holes. But still, this area formula, Bekenstein Hawking formula, is always true. So it's just the maximum value of this uh, entropy, which is included in region A, is given by area divided by 4G Newton. And this area is just the area of this boundary of this system. Uh, so the uh, boundary of this region A, this area just like this partial A. And this is a rather very special property which is peculiar to gravity, and this shows that degree of freedom, maximum degree of freedom, is actually a proportional to the area, not just the volume. So in usual thermodynamics, we have entropy which is proportional to the volume. Thermodynamic entropy is proportional to the volume, which is an extensive property, but here, if we have gravity, this is not true, and it's the maximum amount of degree of freedom is actually proportional to the area. So motivated by this and also some other considerations, holographic principle has been proposed, like Sofus and Sassan, and more defined by many people. And in the end, for example, we get, for example, this kind of holographic principle, so which tells us the following equivalence. That's a bit ambiguous way to define both sides. But anyway, let's consider some quantum gravity in D plus two dimension, some gravitational theory, D plus two dimension, and I. This is actually claimed to be equivalent to the theory without gravity, which is just a gravitational theory, and which is d plus one dimension. It's a one dimension lower. The reason why we have one dimension lower is just come from this region. So in gravity, we have a degree of freedom proportional to area, but in a, a non-gravitational theory, like a standard quantum field theory or quantum maneuver systems, we know that entropy is proportional to the volume. So to match these two different entropy, but just equate them, then we have to change the dimension. And we have d plus two dimensional gravity is equivalent to d plus one dimensional non-gravitational theory, such as quantum mechanics, or matrix quantum mechanics, or quantum field theory, or conformal field theory, and so on. And typically, this non-gravitational theory lives on the boundary of the total space-time. We have some space-time in d, d plus two dimension, which has some time-like boundary, which includes time, and we have this boundary and this on this boundary, this non-gravitational theory, if this is very typical uh, case of this program principle. And if this, this is true, this is because this is quite e quite important because this if this program principle is true, so the understanding of quantum gravity is quite hard. But still, we can use this uh, counterpart, an equivalent counterpart, this theory, which is non-gravitational theory. This is just governed by the rule of quantum mechanics, which we know very well. So we can have a non-perturbative calculation, and this gives a non-perturbative definition of quantum gravity. No, 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 it's a more ambiguous thing, so it's any space time, basically. Right. But uh, of course, we want to make clear this kind of argument, then we need explicit example, which is the ADS-CFT, this most well-studied example, and established example of holography. And the ADS-CFT claims that the gravity or string theory on d plus two dimensional anti-Doshita space, anti-Doshita space, which is a negative, has a negative cosmological constant, and equivalent to some non-gravitational theory, but which is expressly given by the some conformal field theory, CFT, on d plus one dimension. This d plus one dimension lives on the boundary of this anti-Doshita space time. And especially we are, in this my lecture, mainly I'm taking this particular, it's called classical 
gravity limit. That means just a quantum gravity. If you have a, a quantum effect like G spring correction and also alpha prime correction, but we just forget about it. Some particular case where this is justified when this anti dosita space time is very, very large, so that it's much larger than string scale and Frank length. Then we, we can use this uh, just general relativity with negative cosmology constant, which has a solution of anti dosita space. This is a classical gravity limit. And equivalently, it is known that this is a cohomer fuel theory. We should also take some limit to realize this limit. This corresponds to the larger limit in the rank of gauge group of this gauge theory, realization of cohomer fuel theory. We take larger limit and strong recapture limit, and this exactly corresponds to this classical gravity limit. So this ends up with a strongly interacting quantum universe system with a lot of degree of freedom. So we are mainly working on this correspondence between these two. So the most uh, famous example is uh, this uh, type 2B string on AGS5 cross S5 dual to n equal 4 super mu, 4 dimensional n equal 4 super mu. So 5 dimensional anti dosita space and uh, there are 4 dimensional boundary theory. And cohomer symmetry, which is so to come 4, is, is now uh, agree with the ge geometrical symmetry of this AGS5, just the killing symmetry, just uh, geometrical symmetry of this anti dosita space. And also S5, as I saw, six geometrical symmetry. This is the R symmetry of this N equal 4 super amid theory. And if we look, are looking at the, some quantum corrections, it is good. there are two quantities which we should look at. One is the ratio of this uh, anti dosita radius of anti dosita space, size of anti dosita space divided by Planck constant, which is uh, proportional to the N to quarter, and which in, in this uh, gauge theory size. And that means uh, if we want to suppress this quantum gravity effect, Planck constant effect, then we have to take a larger limit, and it goes to very large. And another ratio is uh, this ADS, sorry, this ADS is missing, but ADS radius divided by string scale, string length. This also should be small if we, uh, smaller, because if we, we want to assume that string correction can be negligible. And this turns out to be the related to this constant, this is Tofus coupling with the, this quarter power. And uh, if this coupling constant lambda is very large, then we have strongly coupled CFT. And in that case, this ratio is very big. So we can, again, can just neglect this stringy correction. This is quite a well-known fact. But we, that we are forgetting about this old correction. That means we are taking large and limit and strongly coupled limit in this case. Okay. OK. So. And the, in the ADS CFT, this is actually is very important in our calculation of this entanglement entropy. So this uh, schematic picture of anti-dosita space. We have some extra dimension Z, which we call it. And the anti-dosita metric, we write this way. This is so-called Poincare metric, and also appeared in the last lecture. And uh, so Z is an extra, extra dimension. And T and X is just the coordinate of Minkowski space time. D plus one dimension of Minkowski space time is lives on here. It's a slice, and it, this slice is extended in z direction. And this, there is a warp factor which changes the size of this, this Minkowski space time. And uh, if we assume this is, z is very small, then as you can see, the metric divergence. Metric divergence means that the size of space time is very big. That means degree of freedom is very, very large. That corresponds to exactly ultraviolet limit. There are lots of degree of freedom, but then if we go to the infrared limit, the space time shrink to zero size. Indeed, z goes to infinity, corresponds to the uh, infrared limit in the conformal field theory, or this boundary quantum field theory size. And we always work with this uh, extra dimension, and this plays a very important role. And this, so in summary, this extra dimension z is corresponds to the length scale of the dual equivalent conformal field theory under the RD flow. So, but uh, that means we have some UB limit, and uh, as we know, uh, in quantum field theory, so we have often encounter some UV divergence. To regulate UV divergence, we have to put a cutoff at geometrically at this point. We cannot reach z equal zero because metric divergence. And so we first give some UV cutoff, which is a, z equal a, and a is a very small number, and the continuum limit is defined by a goes to zero. And a is also proportional to the lattice spacing, which also already we mentioned in the many calculation of entanglement entropy, so we always put this UV cutoff. So this is the basic rule of the calculation. 
Okay, so the, then the basic principle of ADS-CFT is very, very simple, but th this is quite deep and a lot of information is included here. And this is so-called bulk to boundary relation. And just, it just claims that the gravity partition function on some manifold is equivalent to the conformal field theory partition function on the boundary of this manifold. And, but you can change uh, M, this manifold M a little bit, and that corresponds to some introducing some force. And it's like, for example, we get some correlation function <laughs> of energy through sensor and so on. This includes information of all correlation functions and free energy and entropy and also entanglement entropy, I, as I will explain later. Okay, so now the question we'd like to ask is intuitively uh, motivated by, partially motivated by this question. So uh, this is the ADS CFT. So we have anti dosita space time and dual to some boundary conformal field theory. And my basic question is that which region, so we have some A and B, let's just divide space into two parts and just <laughs> concentrate, concentrate on particular region A. And we'd like to ask, this, there are some information which are only included in region A. And uh, so what's the counterpart of this information for A in, from the viewpoint of bulk anti dosita space? So roughly speaking, this region is somehow probably it's a, in one dimension is higher here. Uh, sorry, this is B plus two in my convention, but just for only this uh, presentation is like B plus one. But anyway, so this region A is somehow extended in the bulk, and some probably some region which is surrounded by this red curve, red surface, will be responsible for the information for region A in the conformal field theory. But we want to make this uh, more precise, and by looking at particular quantity, for this purpose, the one nice quantity is the so-called entanglement entropy, which we ex introduced, because the entanglement entropy measures the degree of freedom, also measures the information of this particular subsystem of the Hilbert space in, in quantum mechanics. So if we compute the entanglement entropy for A, so that this computation should, should be related to this kind of uh, region, which is realized in bulk ADS space time. Okay, so then we'd like to uh, explain the holographic calculation of this entanglement entropy. So this is a, a, a first I give some holographic formula, which I work with C theory. And uh, so this is an anti dosita space time. And the metric is like this as before. This is a Poincare metric of anti dosita space time. But we can, of course, still modify this metric. And we can just apply this formula, uh, this calculation to any asymptotical radius space time. But just to work, on, work with this uh, pure ADS, one uh, metric. Then we have some extra dimension Z as before, and this is an anti dosita space, and which is equivalent to the conformal field theory lived on this boundary. And then we are looking at the entanglement entropy, which is defined in conformal field theory, quantum field theory. So we previously, in my previous lecture, we defined the entanglement entropy so that we divide space into A and B. So we omit time dimension, time direction is orthogonal, and we always take some time, time slice here. And we divide A and B somehow, anyway, you write. And then the important point is that there is some boundary of A. This is very important. This, if we fix this uh, boundary, then we can just have a separation between A and B. So we fix this boundary partially A. And the prescription, holographic prescription, is that we extend this boundary towards the bulk. So this is originally co-dimension two surface in D plus one dimension in this boundary, but we extend one dimension, we, we extend one more dimension, so that this surface is now, again, co-dimension two surface, but inside this whole bulk region. So if we have ADS2, at ADS D plus two, this surface is D-dimensional surface, and space-like surface. Gate field? Uh, 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 because you mean it's a very complicated system and that this gate theory has some big field and so on. Ah, okay, yeah, well that, uh, we just forget about that issue so far. But uh, anyway, so th it is true there is some complicated point about the uh, division into two Hilbert space for gate theory. But the uh, holographic calculation tells us there are some counterparts in conformal field theory side which resolve that problem. Uh, in the bulk, in the bulk. In the bulk, uh, actually, yeah, this calculation is practical, so we don't need to worry about gauge field. Only in the boundary, we have a really quantum mechanical calculation, right? 
So then we have to worry about that for the user. So that is very important, but I think it's not completely resolved. There are recent several arguments in that way, like Kashini's paper and Maradasen as well, recent paper, but it's not completely <coughs> understood. But that's quite an important problem. But anyway, if we use this uh, holographic description, there should be one unique description in even in four gauge field. And that's what we can look at. That's a very important point, but it's very complicated. Okay. So anyway, so we have some A and B, and we have boundary A of A here, and we extend one dimension here, and there are, so of course, infinitely many different extension of this surface, but the prescription is that we should take the minimum area surface. Area, we can compute area, and we minimize this area, and then there is some unique such surface. So we pick up this surface and call it gamma A. It depends on the so it, this surface gamma A should end on this boundary of A. So gamma partial gamma A should be partial A. And also there are topological condition, which is a little bit subtle. So this region A should be uh, topological equivalent to this surface. But in this formalism, we can say it's a, A and the gamma A is just homologous to each other. Yes? Right, 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 you're right, yeah. Ah, difference dimension is different, for example. Uh, also, this surface, if, if you have ADS5 cross S5, this surface actually implicitly wraps on S5. It's always co-dimension 2 in 10 dimension, it's 8 dimension surface. But in uh, uh, ADS5 cross S5, if we consider Wilson loop, you have two dimension surface because it's fundamental string world tree. Right? Two dimension, it's totally different in that sense. Uh, yeah, maybe it is four or some with them. Yeah, that's true, but uh, I mean, that is quite interesting. But if we talk about the quantum correction to that calculation, it's uh, totally different. Uh, but uh, why did they are matches? I, I have no idea, but it's quite interesting if you check them. You might not have. And indeed, for example, we, we can show that some property called strong severity, if it's also discussed in previous lectures. But also, there are an analogous property is known in Wilson loop. And that can also can be easily proven in holographic way. So there are some analogies. So that is true, but it's still with the real consciousness, I'm not so, so much sure why that happens. So, so yeah, so we have some this, uh, we impose this topological condition and that defines this entanglement entity uniquely. And so the entanglement entity in the end, it's like exactly the same formula as the Beckenstein Hawking formula, area divided by. For the Newton, but this gamma A is not horizon in general, it's just some minimal area. Okay, so the one motivation of this formula is like this, very intuitive. So we have some, this is not nothing proof, just intuitive. So we have, we can, for example, this is a global ADS, and its cross section is just this, this, and this is a boundary of ADS, and this is a bar coordinate, larger coordinate, and if observer sitting here, region A, and uh, assuming that observer cannot see this region B, then this is a prescription in the boundary, so we just press out this region. But in the bulk, again, we want to somehow relate some photo black hole, so there are some horizons which are surrounded by this region B, and the observer see this horizon and uh, compute this vacation hawking formula for vacation hawking entropy for this surface. This is quite an intuitive argument, and roughly speaking, this is just justified in ADS3 at least, this is a sort of Lindra horizon, and indeed, and we just compute this Lindra horizon, Lindra entropy in this way, in, in particular case. And uh, it's, but it's more, the, our, this formula is more general than this nice, prop, nice horizon. So this, uh, uh, this intuitive level, so this holographic entanglement entity suggests that a space time, I mean, in gravitational theory, is somehow correction of small bit of, uh, quantum entanglement. The reason is as follows. So we have some region A and region B, and we compute the entanglement entropy between A and B, and we claim that this is related to the area of this minimal surface. And the area of minimal surface, if you look at this way, so we, Newton constant is just some, in four dimension, for example, is a Planck length square, and we just compute the number of, Planck, so we count the area in the unit of this Planck length. And uh, that in each Planck length unit, we have some one bit in this entropy. So we have some penetrating some for each uh, unit area with respect to this Planck length. So we have one penetrating uh, bit, entangling bit. 
and this way, and we just counting number of bones. So we can naturally think this way. And also, uh, and, uh, we can choose A in anywhere you want. You can just sweep this calculation. And that means the space time is really consists of this kind of small bit. This is very uh, intuitive uh, idea, but the, one way to realize this idea is so-called entanglement minimization, or called MERA, which is originally developed in a subject which is closely related to condensed matter physics and quantum information theory. And I will come back to this uh, prescription, uh, this idea in, in the end of my talk tomorrow. So, so far, I'm just to skip this. Okay. So there are a few comments. And so the two, one, two comments, the previous formula, this formula is actually the simplest case. We assume, we didn't write, but uh, actually I should write that this formula is only true for time independent background, static space time. In static space time, we can use this formula. But in time dependent background, like black hole formation and so on, we have to modify prescription. And then, uh, but actually modification is not so, uh, difficult and actually we should basically we should regard this gamma a this formula is still true but we just replace this gamma a from uh, originally this is a minimal area surface but we just replace this with uh, extremal surface extremal surface means not always minimum area but it's some subtle point of area functional and the, the reason we have to do this is that uh, I mean in time dependent background we cannot restrict onto some unique time slice so we have to look at Lorentzian geometry directly so we have to consider some Lorentzian geometry, and that case there are no minimal, true minimal surface area, because if we go to the neural direction, it's an area of finite. So in that sense, we have to look at the extreme surface, which is just subtle point of area function. And, but it's often true that there are several candidates of extreme surface. In that case, we, we compute the area for each cases, and then we pick up minimum area one. Again, so finally, we need some minimum, minimization of this. This is a covariant prescription. And also, I uh, also meant, quickly meant, would like to mention that the formula looks very similar to Breckenshaw Hawking formula. And indeed, in the presence of black hole horizon, if you have some black hole horizon, this minimal surface, in, if we take this subsystem is very large, then tend to lack the horizon completely. And this lacked part contributes to the Breckenshaw Hawking entropy. Uh, this contribution from this lacked part is given by Breckenshaw Hawking. So that to, to be uh, for this consistency, we should have exactly the same form of this black hole uh, vacation and Hawking form. This consistency. <coughs> If I look at the say black hole geometry, I won't ever get. I mean, in the limit where it reduces to the Bekenstein King entropy. So, would it be possible to uh, have a volume law? Ah, yeah. So, of course, if you have a black hole and then you have a volume law, but this volume is a finite piece of entanglement entropy. It doesn't change the area of behavior. Area of area of piece is divergent, but uh, this black hole part is becomes finite contribution. So it's subreading. We, so in that case, usually we don't call it a volume law. Volume law is historically divergent and it's really mm. divergence. It looks like proportional to volume. That's a, a slightly different thing. Yes. minimum area surface, and then we take maximum of the, them. So that description, just we take some particular time slice in anti space space, and there should be some minimal surface. In that case, it, it seems to be, in some case, there should be some extreme, because this process is also equivalent to extreme. Mm. But uh, not so much mathematically rigorous. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
there is a, so this prescription, of which I mentioned this, I mean, time slice and minimize it, and then that actually gives the proof. And this is done by, I think, Alan Wall, from UC paper. But still, there are some small problems, I think, pointed out by Matt Hedrick, and there are some topological issues, but they beyond, we forget about this realization. Nice pro now, sort of proof is actually this. But no derivation. Yeah. You say that if there are black holes. Yeah. In presence of black holes, if the speaker size grows enough in size, if when it saturates to the black hole, black hole itself. Right, right, right. And this, this is, as you said, this consistency. When consistency, so what is the what is the expectation of expectation of this from the? Ah, from those or even from the field theory side, we expect that. Entanglement entropy is include the final temperature piece, just thermodynamical entropy. For example, if you imagine that the I mean total I mean, subsystem A is actually total space, then this low log row is just a canonical ensemble, it's just a thermal entropy. So that should include this part. And that is a, it is well known that thermodynamical entropy is related to black hole entropy in ADSS. So we just this this is the positive. Okay, so and there, so nowadays uh, there are a lot of verification of holographic this formula, and uh, direct uh, I mean some expressed confirmation, for example, can be done for area law and strong subjectivity. I will come back to this issue and conformal anomaly, the central charge. But nowadays also there are some direct derivation, which especially is uh, a very remarkable work by Luke Poitz and Maldacena, also based on the previous argument by Fusai, and also Fasini and Fleet and Myers. Give a really direct proof of only for n, but only for n this subsystem A is around the sphere and this pure state, pure ADA. And also there are some complicated issue about this point subsystem, and this also resolved by these people. And uh, but however, this is uh, this uh, proof only can be applied to Euclidean ADA CFT. That means uh, essentially uh, static space time. And in really low range and geometry, Euclidean continuation becomes com complex value the metric which is very confusing and we cannot trust this calculation and that sense general time dependent case is still proof is not known but as I also in a question by Sandeep and there is actually almost proof of strong subjectivity about this time dependent case I think it, this means that almost it is correct and there are also quite interesting discussion about correction to holographic entanglement and but it, unfortunately I, I cannot cover this topic this lectures, but the higher derivatives and the one over n fx and higher spin gauge theory, there are uh, discussion about this and it's an interesting development. And but first, uh, let me give some most elementary point of area row. So we should of course explain area row, but this is very quick because this is very simple and because we have some anti dosita space and we have some like this kind of minimum surface and metric divergent around here. So D is zero is the metric divergent. So the main contribution comes should come from here. And the, of course, that should be proportional to the area of boundary. So this is almost trivial. We can more precisely calculate this divergence. And it's of course, this dimension there. So it's like A to D minus one. So this agree with uh, the previous uh, previous uh, area of formula, which I explained uh, yesterday. So let's give this back. And now I but the a strong subjectivity, and the strong subjectivity also we can uh, easily prove. And uh, so strong subjectivity summarize this inequality and this inequality, and also show up this firewall puzzle. This one, I think. And the both side is very easy to show because we have just everything we just project down to two dimension. So this proof almost is also true for higher dimension, but just the essence is just captured by this two dimension diagram. So region, this area A, B, C is here, and this is the boundary of ADS. And the boundary ADS space time is here, this region. And then we have a red curve corresponds to the subsystem A plus B, the minimal surface of A plus B, A plus C is this blue curve. And we just uh, reconnect them. It's, the total area is same, just to reconnect. You just call this surface is a surface of A plus B, C, C. But there is a really a true minimal surface which mi minimize area. That means this we should have this inequality. This is almost trivial. And the opposite recombination, we get the opposite inequality. So, and uh, 
from geometrical viewpoint, also we cannot get more than more inequality than this uh, from this argument. So it's really consistent with the uh, known facts in, in the quantum information theory. But uh, one, one, one might uh, quickly notice that this proof don't need minimal area surface, but you can just, this proof can be true for any, any entropy which is given by minimum of some functional, local, some local functional, minimum of some local functional. So this degree of freedom actually is used to extend this holographic entropy in, in a higher derivative collection theory, a theory with higher derivative collection. So even that case, this, I mean, strong conservativity should be immediately be proven. <coughs> So the simplest example is AS3 CFT2. So this case is uh, most important. I just uh, quickly look at the detailed calculation. So this uh, anti three dimensional anti Doshita space looks like this. Uh, D is extra dimension and T is time and it's transverse and the X direction is the space direction, two pl one plus one dimension. And we, in that case, we take this uh, minimal surface like this, just actually minimal curve, geodesic line. And end the point we fix this way, and its distance is 2L, L, L, here. And then we can immediately find, they just solve the, the geodesic equation and find that this is a semi circle, precisely semi round circle, minimal circle. So we just need to integrate uh, this length unit on this element on this uh, curve. So th on this induced metric on here is like given this way in terms of this z coordinate. This is just, this is a semi circle. Just plug this here. And uh, so its length looks like this integral, and it's divergent because uh, if we, uh, so near the cutoff scale, cutoff region, if z equals zero, this is cut off by a. And if when a z equals beta is a dz over z, it's logarithmically divergent. But if we keep this cut off, then we, we find this formula. And, this, and after we plug this formula into this holographic formula, this area divided by 4d newton, and now we know it is well known the relation of central charge and this radius of ADS, which is a brown in a relation. And then we plug this in and we get C over 3 and log of 2L over, over L. This is precisely agree with 2D conformance theory that which I explained yesterday. This is a simplest case of this calculation. So although it is quite interesting to look at the final temperature case, I don't show the detailed calculation, but in this is a um, qualitative level we can see the following discussion. So of course a 2D CFT, but you can generalize in higher dimension. And in high temperature phase, we can just forget about some summation of a geometry. So we just look at the black hole uh, geometry. And this case, the duality background is a black hole, ADS black hole, but in three dimension, this is so-called BTZ black hole. This appears in Rajesh's uh, lecture. And like this one, very simple metric. And this case, we can easily compute this minimal area curve, minimal area sur surface. Then we get this entropy. And this again agree with 2D CFT result. And, but if we uh, look at this formula, our <coughs> would like to, we'd like to understand this formula geometrically. So then, roughly, we have this kind of structure. So we have some black hole. This uh, boundary is one dimension. Time is, again, orthogonal. And we talk about region A is here and region B is opposite. And we, com we consider some minimal curve, geodesic, which connect this end of two end points of A with gamma A. And this is one curve, but there are other curves. Because uh, we want to just connect this point to this point, then there are opposite one. Because black hole is a abstraction, there are nothing here because we are talking about Euclidean geometry. So let's talk about Euclidean continuation, this plus. Then this R is restricted to greater than RH, black hole scale. So this is just <coughs> nothing here. That means this, this curve and this curve is topologically equivalent. And then this topological condition plays an important role. This A should be homologous to this gamma A. So we should call this curve as a gamma A, and the other one is called, should be called gamma B. So that way, we, we sh immediately show that this SA is not equal to SB. And this is true for mixed states. This also explained uh, my last lecture. And also, the wrapped part, black hole, so we have some, we assume this region B is very large, then it's somehow wrapped on this black hole for, for a long distance, and that gives this kind of extensive contribution so from here. So we, this sinc becomes exponentially large when L goes to large, and that's cancelled by log, and we have a linear term about L, 
which is like, like exactly volume, no? It also appeared in the previous questions, and it is finite, but it's like volume, proportional to volume, and this is exactly uh, the piece of thermodynamical entropy of this inside this entanglement. Huh? A high temperature limit. Uh, otherwise, I mean, it's a bit complicated. I mean, we, we have to sum of thermal ADA and also uh, this BT is black hole and some modular transformation. That's a bit calculation. So Gravity calculus is very complicated. Huh? Yeah, 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 yeah. But, but uh, it's, uh, I mean, to get also nice results, uh, I mean, we should have uh, some analytical control of this calculation, then we need this unit. And indeed, that this kind of complexity appears also for uh, CFD. So I showed some results in last lecture that with the finite size and this finite temperature, we have very complicated uh, expression of entanglement. And because that also corresponds to some sum of uh, same geometry. But we want to make simple as in that way. So another uh, point is that there are some phase behavior of phase transition. There are lots of examples, but just I want to show one, one of them, which is this corresponds disconnected subsystem. So this is very simple. This 1D system, 1 plus 1D. And the subsystem A is defined by union of two intervals. This interval and two intervals, 1 and 2. And that means they are disconnected subsystems. And that case, there are two options of the choice of minimal surface. One is just take this one, this connected point, and they are isolated. Another one is connected to minimal surface. This, we connect this point, this point, this point, this point. And uh, both are actually compete with each other. And as I uh, told you before, uh, the, if there are several candidates of minimal surface, we should compute each area. And uh, finally, we choose the minimum area one. So this, uh, of course, then we get unique answer. So we have to compute both area. And indeed, it depends on the distance between this region. So if A, this region, this subsystem and the other, A1 and A2 is a really far, uh, separated far apart, then it is obvious that this connected minimal surface has a much larger area compared with this one. So this is favored. This separated one is favored. But uh, if we, they are close to each other, actually, we can show that this connected one is favored. In that sense, there are some entropy itself is constant, but there are some its derivative can can jump this way. So we so sometimes people call this some sort of phase transition from the viewpoint of entanglement, and this is uh, appears in many places in anti dosita calculation gravity side. And one might think this is a bit funny, but from the viewpoint of CFT, we should have some more continuous change. But actually, this is some artifact of large energy. And this is, uh, I mean, for example, confirmed by Hedrick paper. And uh, indeed, if we take large central charge limit of 2D CFT, we have this kind of behavior. And this will be, and so there are no uh, contradiction between them. But in, if we keep finite change, then everything should be smoothed out. OK, so now I come to the uh, derivation of holographic formula. And so I just give some schematic uh, derivation of this. So let us try to this uh, derive this from the viewpoint of this bulk boundary relation, which is a fundamental uh, principle of ADS CFT. And then we employ some <coughs> replicatory, replica method, which already I explained last lecture. So let's remember that this press A, press row A to N, this is equivalent to the partition function of this N seated surface. Uh, this is also true in higher dimension, we just increase the dimension some NC to geometry. So, so, let's, this is a so this is a boundary geometry. We, we have some this NC to geometry here. And, but actually, this is a bit uh, singular in that sense. If we go around this point, end of this cut, we have a 2 pi n. We have 2 pi n uh, angle. So we have this NC. And if we go around here, it's like 2 pi n. That means there are deficit angle, negative deficit angle. Uh, N, right? This is 2 pi minus, 2 pi is the usual angle, but 2 pi, just some difference, a negative deficit angle appears. And we have to deal with this, but this is, uh, deficit angle is quite useful to calculate things. So let's take a very naive assumption. This is not exactly, this is not correct, but just to start with naive assumption, that the ADS dual of this geometry, this is a boundary geometry, has just given by naively this singularity into the bulk. So first, let's predict, pretend this is true. Then 
So this uh, curvature, we have some this cosmic spring or this uh, singular surface deficit angle extended the bulk. So and at the, each point, we have delta functionally divergent curvature like this. For this deficit angle, we have this this Ricci scalar. And so we have some Einstein Hilbert term and the cosmological constant term. But it is easy to see that cos cosmological constant term doesn't contribute to this rather topological contribution. So we just replace this R with this singular contribution. And then, so this is a deficit angle surface. And this uh, everything is localized down to this surface because this delta function. So we have area of this surface, right, because of delta function and integral to root D. And the coefficient is, again, this proportion delta is one of one minus n. And we plug this into the uh, basic formula of replica method of entanglement entropy. And just we, we, this means that log of, log of partition function of gravity is a uh, uh, partition function is, of course, in a classical gravity li limited minus s gravity. And it's path integral, but we replace with subtle point value in classical approximation. So this is a classical solution. We plug classical solution here. And so that means this s is minus log z. So we can easily compute this log z, log zn from this uh, action of Einstein Hilbert form. So we just plug this in here and just take derivative of n, then we get area divided by coordinates. This is exactly what we want. And then we also we need to require the, uh, we, that uh, this uh, solution sh should satisfy equation motion. And this naively we can do just to take a variational principle about this. So then we have some variational principle for variation of area should be vanishing. So that means gamma A is minimal surface. So this is very simple, but this uh, argument is not exactly correct as pointed by Hedrick. Huh? Yeah, this is angle surface is just, uh, uh, I mean, so if we look at this cross section, the metric looks like this, rho square, and this theta square and theta takes the value zero to to pi to pi n. So we have if we go around we have two pi n. That's the definition. Because that is true at this boundary. So we just naturally change. So but this is of course not good because this is singular in the bar. That means uh, I mean we should we don't want any singular solution in the gravity so other gravity solution and we, we don't say this is a solution and this doesn't satisfy equation motion. So we should have some actually smooth solution in the bulk. And indeed, if we compute Rainier entropy, entanglement entropy somehow matches with what we expect. But uh, if we compute Rainier entropy in areas we set up, this, we have a really serious disagreement between this naive calculation and real calculation in CFT. So, but recently, so roughly understand the, this kind of behavior, but uh, Recently, it was really uh, explained in detail that this naive argument actually gives a correct result only when, only when this entanglement entropy limit, n goes to one limit. Another case, it, of course, we, we don't get this uh, nice result. So the argument by this uh, Lukoit and Maldacena is a, uh, there are a lot of detailed argument, but uh, just I pick up some essence, it's just this one. And so this, we, we need to compute press row A to N, and we just naively regard this as a sum, this deficit angle surface, which is, looks singular. But uh, anyway, so we know that if we got n goes to one limit, n goes to one limit, this, anyway, we have some definite solution, just pure ADS or some black, pure ADS black hole and so on. It satisfies the equation motion. So it's very stable against perturbation. So if we compute this press row n for real manifold, smooth manifold, which is very difficult to compute, and the difference between this one and also the real singular one, which we just uh, compute by using singular surface. It's actually, it's a first order difference, actually, in the first order uh, perturbation to proportion one, of, uh, one minus n, it actually uh, disappears because uh, we satisfy equation motion. Uh, equation motion is satisfied, so one, one minus n, order one minus n term is missing. So the next order is come from n minus one square. So that's the reason, and uh, for this, Entropy calculation, we just need linear term. So that's the reason, actually, this naive procedure also gives the same result. So by using that, we can actually justify this uh, calculation. This works because also the difference between smooth and singular solution is localized in some region. 
otherwise it might be of order n minus 1 square, but if in space it is disagreeing for a lot, then it could be bigger than this is. Uh, so but anyway, we take the n goes to one limit. It, I mean, difference is very, very. So this smooth one, and we just have a, some singular one. We just talk about this difference. But uh, this difference goes to, I mean, one over n proportional to one over n. Metric difference of metric is like this, uh, and, but uh, that contribution disappears uh, because of this equation. Of So anyway, so this is, it is very fortunate that we, if we take this limit, the, all this problem is gone. But if we are interested in any entropy, this means that we cannot use this kind of argument, and we have to really deal with smooth geometry, which is very, very complicated, except some particular case. So and also just I uh, mentioned that the higher derivative correction. So and there are also recent several dis uh, progress about this, but maybe slightly earlier, just I uh, summarize some earlier progress about this. But uh, this is, yeah, in the presence of stringy correction, we forget about one of n correction. We just talk about stringy correction. Then, uh, I mean, we have some still some local functional with our higher derivative. So we, we have some modification of area, uh, area formula of this holographic entanglement entropy, but it's still somehow treat in the same way and strong subjectivity holds as I just explained. So, uh, for example, one precise formula was uh, almost established for Lovelock gravity. The special, uh, this is a special class of higher derivative gravity, which has a very nice property, and done by these authors. And if we, particular case, simplest case, so-called gauss bonnet gravity, is discussed by many people, it's just R, R, there is R, R square term in the Lagrangian, in, in addition to this standard cosmological constant and einstein hilbert term, in the particular gauss bonnet, it's an Euler character. In that case, we know that the entanglement entropy is given by this formula. This is the area. This plus this one is just means integral over root h with the induced metric. So this is the area form, area term. But there are correction which proportional to lambda, gauss bonnet correction is given by this. So roughly speaking, this formula can be obtained in the pre exactly the same way. Right? We introduce some uh, deficit angle, so this changes r into deficit angle. So r is just gone. And if you have r square, one of r is gone. So one of uh, the other r is the remaining. So uh, this is, uh, it looks like this uh, world type calculation, but not exactly the same. But in this case, we get, we can get a nice result like this. Capital R there is the Ricci scale. Ah, sorry, sorry, this, yeah, this is the Ricci scale. And this R ADS is ADS radius. Uh, sorry, this is confusing notation. This is the Ricci scale. Yeah, 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 this is the now we go to the higher dimension and we give some explicit calculation. So we compute the holographic entanglement entropy in the Poincare metric. And there are two basic setup. One is strip like this and the circular disk, just around the sphere. Other case, it's quite difficult to treat analytically. So that's the reason we mainly focus on these two. And the first one is both a minimal surface looks like this. It looks like half of the cylinder. And this is a half of the half of the round sphere. And for example, the strip case, we get two terms. First term is area of divergence. And the second term is some finite, some universal finite constant. But if we take, for example, d goes to one, they combine into logarithmic term. And this, uh, of course, agree with to this case, which is already mentioned. On the other hand, if we look at the circular disk, it's like this. And this is also true, this behavior is also true for any uh, subsystem disk. Topology, if the topology is disk, then this kind of behavior is true, but with different coefficient. And so first term is again, of course, area of divergence, but we have some other term, other subreading divergence term. And we assume this d plus one dimensional conformity theory, dual to ADS d plus two. And the result depends on the dimension. If the dimension is uh, a D is even, that means total dimension of conformal field theory is auto dimension. In auto dimensional conformal field theory, we end up with one constant. On the other hand, even dimensional conformal field theory, we end up with some logarithmic term. And this uh, constant term is something recently called F, F function. And 
and it's also expected to be satisfied some sort of analog of this theorem, it's a monotonicity under the Aldrich law. And the which is quite nice because, uh, I mean, in other dimensional conformal field theory, we cannot define central charge, but still there is a nice quantity which um, measures degree of freedom, like central charge. So this, we can define this quantity by looking at the entanglement of V. And also, in a easy dimension, there are some well known story of central charge, and indeed, this Q, coefficient Q, is a linear combination of several conformal, uh, conformal anomaly or central charges. So, but if we choose particular shape like this, if this is uh, uh, in 2D CFD, we only have a central charge C. So, this result already we extend. And especially if we took a round sphere in 4D, in 4D CFD, if this is a really round sphere about subsystem A, then we get 4 minus 4 times A. A is one of the central charge, which satisfied A theorem. And sorry, this A is different from this A. This A is subtle, so I just write this red character. And in higher dimension, we have a similar uh, result. But if we, once you modify this shape, then we have a, another central charge called C appears, and it looks more complicated. Okay. So now, okay. So, uh, uh, so let me go on a little bit uh, about next topic, which is uh, mainly I'm going to talk in the uh, next lecture, but uh, let me talk about, uh, quickly talk about some properties of entanglement entropy for excited state. So, so far we explained how to compute entanglement entropy in quantum field theory and uh, um, photographic calculation. But now I'd like to apply this idea to real calculation, some interesting setup. So one interesting setup is the entanglement entropy for excited state. We already explained the behavior like this. We already explained this kind of behavior for ground state. Now we'd like to look at the excited state in conformal field theory to, to get some dynamical information. But there are some basic motivation. Partially, just there are some simple motivation for that. So we know that we know very well thermodynamics. And in thermodynamics, this first law of thermodynamics tells us that temperature times entropy shift is equal to energy shift. And, uh, and the entropy is, uh, in some sense, we can, this is. Uh, uh, we can regard this as uh, some measure of information, amount of information. So this relates the amount of information to energy, which is quite interesting relation, from the view, even from your point of this information theoretical uh, viewpoint. So it is quite natural, this is very nice, but it is very natural to ask whether can we have some similar relation even for the system without any thermodynamical equilibrium, the system which are far from thermodynamical equilibrium. But now we have, anyway, nice candidate about entropy, which is the entanglement entropy, which also measures the amount of information, which is included region A. And we don't know temperature. But uh, we have also candidate of energy, which is uh, just candidate in, uh, this uh, just energy inside some particular subsystem, just region A. We take some region A and just compute the area here and also compute the entanglement entropy. And there might be some interesting relation between them which is motivated by first law of thermodynamics. So motivated by this, let, let us compute these quantities. And this delta means uh, some excitation from the uh, vacuum. So it's quite natural to think about this excited state entropy. Mm. So, so I can define the entire entropy out of equilibrium. That's what you're saying. Yeah, out of equilibrium. Yeah. So we just talk about the zero temperature point of yeah, point of the but uh, what about the energy? Energy, I, how will I define? Energy, just a uh, ground state, take the ground state energy zero. Yeah. And just excited the energy. Nice. And uh, actually, we focus on uh, conformal field theory. Otherwise, the result is still possible to compute something, but the result is not so simple. So I just, we want to concentrate on conformal field theory. So, but uh, for that, let's take the first limit. This first limit is uh, the main, main purpose of Talk, here, talk now, but tomorrow I'm going to the opposite limit, which is actually more interesting. So it's a uh, subsystem is large. But here we just take the rather simpler limit where subsystem A is very, very small. But more precisely, the very, this means that, ah, sorry, very small it means like that, like this M. But I have to explain this photographic calculation before that. So let's, so we, we this means that roughly speaking, we want to just excite anti-Doshita space very weakly. So this anti-Doshita, some ex 
excitation. So infrared geometry is slightly modified. And we, so and the metric looks like this, and we just assume translation invariance and so on. And so we have some FZ function which looks like minus MZ D plus. This is ADM map. M is just mass deformation. And one solution, of course, there, if there is a horizon here, ADS Churchill black hole satisfies this kind of asymptotic behavior, but uh, more generally, we can have a maybe some star configuration or some holographic superconductor or anything is fine here, just quite universal. Just we are looking at the first uh, deviation about from this pure area. So it's a M is a, this area mass of geometry, and Z is a radial ejection, and we are particularly looking at the UV region. We forget about details because this depends on details. We want to find some universal result, just focus on UV region. So then we have this kind of first deviation from the pure areas. If we do F1, D is 1, 1, then this is really pure area. And, yeah? It is an excitative state, but time independent. Time independent. But actually, we can also assume time independence, but yeah, just to see what it says. Um, so this M is a mass, and this is a chronographic energy stress test, but it's the energy density that you are CFT is proportional to this parameter M. So now we, uh, we like to uh, assume this small subsystem unit. More precisely, this M, this mass deformation of parameter M times L to D plus 1 is much smaller. This is a dimensionless quantity. It's much smaller than 1. And then, so we can, it is immediate to see here that, that everything depends on this quantification, this perturbation. And everything actually becomes linear about the M. And we, what we get is like this, this relation. So the, we can talk the delta SA, which enters the delta B shift, and this delta EA is an energy shift. And they are proportional with each other. And the interesting point is this coefficient it looks like rather universal. So in the following sense, so these are the temperature, this energy scale. It's like proportional to 1 over L because it's conformal with energy. But this coefficient, this coefficient C, A L is a size of the subsystem, A. Size of the subsystem, so you can choose any choice, any, any shape of A, but just take some size here. And the coefficient actually depends on the choice of this subsystem. It's a geometrical quantity, but this C doesn't depend on the uh, other quantity, like coupling constant or some uh, or some lack of gauge groups and so on. It's very uh, just number. And if in particular for spherical case, then it's just like this simple number. So this is uh, uh, yeah. Sorry, but roughly uh, of this what you think there is an effective technique. Thermodynamic temperature is so kind of is smaller than the thermodynamic. Yes, 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 yes. And so it is um, mostly uh, set by the size of Yeah, yeah. Kind, kind of a good under temperature, I guess, but it's. So, besides the understanding of this effective temperature, not so much. Yeah, but it's kind of. Yes, so this metric which you have written, you need extra magnitudes in order to satisfy Einstein equation. Oh, yeah, yeah, so this satisfies the back of Einstein equation, actually. Yeah, it is, that is very important. So this coefficient, this coefficient is related by Einstein equation. And we don't assume this vacuum, right? Everything is concentrated in infrared, and it, uh, UV region is uh, rather normalizable deformation. So that case, so if we summarize this uh, a very simple result, so like this, we can summarize this way. So if you consider some excited state in conformal field theory, which has approximately translational and rotational invariance, then, and we can show that if this subsystem A is very small, such as energy density times L to D plus 1 is very small, but actually we can allow this order in here in a holographic calculation. If this satisfies, then this kind of first law like relation is always true. So entanglement temperature, this is something we don't know exactly the meaning of this, but just, just call this is a coefficient of this. But they, delta SA and delta EA is really proportional to each other and up to this rather universal constant, which we call the entanglement temperature. And this, temp this constant is depends only on the geometry of this subsystem A. This is a holographic prediction. Yes. Ah, delta is, sorry, delta is A is, uh, delta is A is, uh, ah, sorry, the shift of entanglement entropy. That means, uh, delta is A is, uh, Simply, uh, entanglement entropy for excited state minus entanglement entropy for 
grand spectrums. Uh, this is a finite, so the area of the Lagrange tensor is out, and this is a uh, finite quantity, which is actually useful. So this relation comes from the holographic computation, right? Yeah, right, right. right. So well, actually, I have mentioned, yeah, this is two uh, different criteria, right? Quantum music criteria. And there are also several developments of this relation, and especially for example, the paper by this group Myers and Proveritas, and also the paper of the Dias and Proveritas, shows that actually we can prove this relation, especially when this uh, subsystem is down to let us assume subsystem A to down to B, then we can exactly prove this relation, and like this way. So this is HA, something called uh, entanglement Hamiltonian, which just defines the law. Minus local reduced asymmetries. And if we just uh, I mean, play with this of this so called relative entropy, we can easily show this entropy shift is entanglement entropy shift is equal to the shift of this uh, entanglement Hamiltonian, assuming that delta S A is very, very small. This is both uh, if we take the first order perturbation of the these two quantities, we can immediately show this. But still it's not clear. Right? It's not clear that the how what is the meaning of this H A. But if we have conformal field theory, let's assume conformal field theory, and if we take this round sphere, you can directly relate this HA to some energy stress tensor. And if we use this non trivial relationship, we can actually prove this uh, formula. And it's even true for, uh, if the perturbation is very small, uh, then this is true for space. I mean, some, even if we have some, we don't have some translational invariance or time dependence, this is still true. We can actually confirm this. This is a one point. And uh, also, it is quite interesting. So, this is assumed that, anyway, this is delta SA is very small, this assumption always. And uh, that is correspond to the small subsystem limit or the small perturbation limit. But we can also, interesting to just go beyond such a limit. Then it is quite natural to look at some um, Einstein equation, analog of Einstein equation. But, uh, Non-linear Einstein equation quite hard. Just we compute this uh, analysis for perturbative Einstein equation. Just we would want to rewrite perturbative Einstein equation from the viewpoint of entanglement, holographic entanglement entropy. And that's uh, something we I worked with uh, Nozaki and Masawa and Batsaria and uh, last year. And then our result looks like this. And it's just natural. Uh, just we rewrite Einstein equation, perturbative Einstein equation in terms of delta S A. And now they depend on t, t is a time, and x is a, t is a time for which we measure this entropy, and x is a, this center of mass of this round sphere, we assume round sphere, and the position is x, and L is a just the radius of this subsystem. And indeed, this is a coordinate of, looks like coordinate of anti Doshita space time. So this is a Minkowski space, and this is extra dimension, and the number of coordinate matches. And it looks like some equation motion in anti Doshita space, but not exactly, because we don't have some time derivative and so on. But this is still true. But this, we can confirm this is exactly true for conformal field theory and a direct, from direct calculation. And uh, this all means if you have some matter field, like a scalar field in the bulk, then we have additional contribution, which like a square of some one point function. But uh, if we are talking about just pure gravity, you can just forget about this, it's very simple. And, uh, this can be easily solved in terms of Bessel function. And as you know, in, in the solution of this fluctuation, and the Doshita space it looks like a Bessel function, they agree with each other. Yeah. This you, you do the calculation in the bulk and you yeah. show the perturbative and the Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, so, yeah, so this is a long way to describe the result, but we can also integrate this equation. Uh, then what do people show that like the ground stone and Prometheus and Maya and also and Fatima, they show that actually this first law, this first law for imposed for this ground sphere is actually a <coughs> perturbative Einstein equation. So because we can for example from this equation we can uh, integrate this equation to get some equation. But this equation is exactly first law and opposite. And of course, we, we cannot talk about any non-linear order of Einstein equation, but this uh, says that it's a part of the But maybe if you know this, uh, uh, this uh, long history of this kind of relation with sound dynamics of Einstein equation, of course, we have some main results, like Jacobson's idea. <coughs> so I think 
closer to it. That because if we talk about the lab sphere, then actually we can map this system into a political black hole, and it actually end up with it is reduced to just black hole in the In that sense, maybe it's good, very similar to this idea. But we can conclude that maybe it could take clear many things in this setup. Okay, so I think it's a good time to stop. So next I'd like to go to the opposite way. So for large subsystem is it so we get the total divide with that Thank you very much. So let us uh, take a couple of questions and then we'll break for tea and then resume with the discussion. So uh, yes, Roger. I'll give you the mic.
So, uh, if you have a, like, uh, suppose you have a boundary which is the ADS type, yeah. and you have a near horizon geometry which is different. So, you, uh, are you saying that you apply the new catenative prescription and then uh, take the uh, near horizon uh, limit to respect the I mean, uh, entanglement entropy in the IR region? Ah, yeah, okay. So, if you have the ADS5 on IR geometry, it's part time. So, suppose they take the uh, near boundary geometry, suppose ADS2, and the near horizon geometry, suppose ADS2 cross R. Ah, 2 cross R. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, still, I, I mean, yeah, so I, yeah, we can compute, we can compute the center of the whole region, right? And we just get rid of divergence. That is the uh, IR contribution. Yeah, uh, but if I take it from the field theory point of view, uh, so isn't the field theory for the these two uh, uh, regions different? I mean, it is a subsystem region. Yeah, so yeah, I, uh, but uh, anyway, so it depends on how you choose I mean, subsystem in quota pieces. Suppose, uh, suppose for AS3 yeah. uh, cross R2, I mean, the field theory is not just 1 plus 1 DCFT, right? It is 1 plus 1 DCFT plus something else. Ah, okay. So, but ADS3 in the infrared. Yes. ADS3 yeah. cross R2. Yes. Uh, yeah, in that case, it's a, a copy, many copies of CFT1, CFT2. Right, but if, if in the uh, near boundary, yeah. I can have an ADS5. Oh. Right? Yeah. So, uh, so how do you, uh, I mean. No, no, anyway, it depends on how you define the subsystem. right? So, in, in, anyway, you have some infrared image, but you have a, a little bit computer cell, right? You can define some system in unit complex theory, right. and then the result is just minimal surface. And if we are, if we want, you want to define some system in higher theory, we can just take by higher limit of the geometry, just extract the higher <coughs> geometry, and again we can write ADS safety four calculation four in the set of ADS three safety two. Then that should get a new calculation. Well, what I suggest is let's uh, take a break. Let's thank Nadashi again.